What's up guys, Turbo Man 351 here. I want to do a quick little video on that Pulsar Turbo that I got a while ago. Um, I guess it's been, I guess it's been like a month now since I bought it. I made the last video when I got it. Um, quick update, the Turbo is absolutely, I mean outstanding. This is crazy man. Pulsar Turbos are legit. Now that's an 80 millimeter dual ball bearing, ceramic ball bearing. I have to say this is probably the first ceramic ball bearing that I've ever owned. And let me just say, dude, this thing spools like an animal, literally. I, we're talking 2,800 RPMs and this thing is lit off. And um, I have nothing but absolutely outstanding things to say about it. It spools quick. It's very fast responsive with the throttle. I mean, just whack, whack. And this thing just absolutely lights off. It's an outstanding turbo. I don't know what else to say about it. Um, I've ran VS Racing turbos for the longest time. Don't get me wrong, nice turbos, okay? But Pulsar turbos are just a ooh, little bit better, okay? In my opinion. Um, now, an 80 millimeter ceramic dual ball bearing uh, Pulsar Turbo is about $1,300, so they're about $250, $300 more than your VS Racing ceramic ball bearing turbo, okay? And I use the word ceramic loosely because everybody calls everything ceramic now when it comes to waxing your car, when it comes to certain oils and coatings and things like that. Everybody uses the word ceramic. But I have to say that Pulsar, a real dual ceramic ball bearing turbo, obviously it will spin forever when you shut the car off. That does that. VS Racing turbos never did that. As soon as you shut the car off, it was done speeding. By the time you came out of the car, it was done. Okay? Just a little tit for tat. So here's the VS Racing turbo. I had to rip it apart a while ago I did this. I still got the parts here. But the bearing cartridge, which is this guy right here. Now, I was told a while ago by Varen that you couldn't rebuild these. Now, I don't, know, I don't know if that was just a marketing thing that he just didn't want to sell the parts for it because he wants you to buy the whole turbo and not just pieces of it. But I don't know. I doubt he really meant to say that. Varen is a very nice guy. And so this puppy was making noises, man. This is the cartridge here. A ball bearing goes in right there. This is it right here. Let me show you how these work. Just a simple, it almost looks like a skateboard bearing. I'm not kidding you. And those are not ceramic, my friend. Those are just regular stainless steel bearings, okay? And obviously this, okay? Nice tolerances there, falls right into there. And then here's the shaft, and as you can tell, this just slides onto there, okay? This pops into here, all right? This is the center section, boom. You get the idea, and this guy here pops in, and then this comes down, boom, and then there's your turbo. That's the exhaust wheel, by the way. Anyway, um, you get the idea. Um, I wanted to rebuild this, but I'm looking at it here, dude, and you can see that the seals are bad. They're really hard. This center section here in the middle, this is what gets really hot, dude. I mean, this thing, when you're really getting into it, sometimes this guy right here will glow red. Yes, it's nuts. Um, but just going over all this stuff here, dude, I ripped it all apart, piece by piece, tit for tat. Uh, not a lot of moving parts, just a bunch of seals and tight tolerances, thingies you got there. The wheel is immaculate, dude. Look at that. Never had a rock go in there. Never, never anything go into the turbine housing. I ran this without a filter, not even a nip. Nothing, dude. Nothing. Absolutely perfect. Um, so, yeah, dude. 80 millimeter billet wheel. So what I'm gonna do, I don't know. Um, you know, it's still, look how nice that is, dude. This thing is still like new, the parts are. 
All I have to do is just replace this intersection, but when you do that, this is about, oh, $400. So, I don't know. What do you do? I don't know. I know what I did. I bought a new one. So, Turbo Man buys turbos. Anyway, so, just a quick update, man. Car runs great. I freaking love it. It's outstanding. We're about 22 pounds of boost right now, and it's just an absolute animal. The car has lasted very long and i think joe simpson for that at tempest racing because the tune is absolutely dead nuts right on target it's perfect i can't ask for anything better you know when you have the absolute perfect tune and i mean just the car is just flawless you know starts right up no hesitation no bucking no nothing you know what i mean and it's just what can you say so next up on the business, we're out down here. This guy here, we're just waiting for machine work. You know what that is. That is the dart block or well, copy of the dart block, Speedmaster, Dart Iron Eagle copy, which is just as good, I think. Looks a little bit better. It's thicker in some areas in the dart block, I've noticed. Um, in the webbing, in the mains. Um, what else? That's about it. Now, I got that block very cheap for $1,600. I did a video on it, and I was, I remember at the time, I was like, oh, I got this great deal. It was a Black Friday deal. I think what the guy did there, he sold me a blemish block for cheap. He just didn't tell me about it. So, I got it very cheap. There are no blemishes, though. I mean, everything checks out perfect, so... What can you say? I don't know. Um, I got a great steal on it, I guess. But anyway. Um, methanol. Oh, yes. I did say that. Methanol. We're going to go to a methanol blend. Uh, when we get over 15, towns, 15 pounds of boost, this puppy is going to spray into the intake, cool the charge, and let it rip. Anything over 25 pounds of boost, I would absolutely recommend either Q16, E85, or methanol injection. Um, just to be smart and to be safe. Um, so I don't know, when I get the other block in here, I'm just gonna run straight Q16, or I might go to E85, I don't know yet. I'm still playing my cards uh, to see what I'm going to do. Um, what else, dude? I got so much property out here, dude. Look at all this. Jimmy Jam Jam, dude. I got all this stuff out here, dude. Woo! Praise the Lord, man. I love it out here. God has absolutely blessed me with property. That's a winery plantation that we live on. And I got all this to play with. Praise the Lord. This guy here, he's chilling. A lot of people are going to hate me for this. I know. I know. I think you know what I'm about to say. What do you think is going to go in here? I love the Ford 302. I can only do so much to it right now. And the parts for this motor to kind of go up to a little bit faster, eh, it can get pricey. I know I might put an LS in here only because there's ready parts available and they're absolutely cheap, okay? And it's almost a no-brainer to have one Fox body with all Ford parts and then one with whatever. You know what I mean? So we have a dedicated, dedicated Ford car that will always be Ford, obviously. And then we'll have another one that's got a mix of Chevy parts, Ford parts, whatever parts. Uh, just experimenting with the blue car. That's like our test ground. That's going to be, you know, the slate to do things that I wouldn't normally do with the red car. Uh, for being maybe scared to do it or not too sure what to do with it. Uh, don't know if I'm going to break it type of deal. So we'll try it on the blue car first. Um, so that's where we're at with that. Not a whole lot going on, man. You know, Turbo Man just chilling, you know, doing the dad thing and turning wrenches on the car. Right now, it's about longevity, okay? When you get into muscle cars and you get a really nice engine built, high horsepower, you know, got all the good parts on it that you can possibly buy, 
Holly, T56 Magnum, great turbos, you know, Jessel valve train. I mean, all the top line stuff, right? You want it to last. Longevity is the key, man. You know, how many people do you know build cars like this and they go out, they beat the snot out of it because it's a high horsepower car and then boom, it breaks, you know, and then the car sits for a long time. And then he sells parts from it and then that's it. It's done. You know what I mean? Our goal here at man is to bring you a good build, teach you how to keep it to last long how to maintenance your car and take care of it, okay? When to change your oil. Now, you guys might think this is nuts, but I change the oil in this car every 1,500 miles or less. I know that is crazy. I do not let the oil viscosity go change colors on me. As soon as that nice, beautiful, brand new gold color starts to change, I change the oil. I always keep it brand new, spanking new, 24-7 in this engine, okay? I do not let the oil go dark or get black or even when it's starting to break down, when which is around, I think, 2,000 miles or so, the viscosity starts to break down. I think, I could be wrong. I know these new oils can last. They tell you change your oil every 10,000 miles. I would never, ever freaking do that. It's always been 3,000 miles or less. Don't ever, ever not change your oil, you know, past 3,000 miles. That is just stupid. That's my opinion. You wonder why these cars are just, you know, locking up and they look like crap and they're sludged mudge. And you remember that video I did a while ago, that LS I had, my very first one, and it was a sludge pudge. It was like crazy disgusting. There you go. Okay. So yeah, every 1,500 miles in here, I never let it go bad. I keep it fresh constantly. And uh, hey, that's why I have oil pressure. When your oil pressure at idle, depending on your bearing clearances and how good the engine is put together, if it's around 45 or higher at idle, after you've had it for a year or two, you're doing very good, my friend. Very good. Okay, that's my opinion though. 40 pounds of oil pressure or higher at idle, turbo car, and you've had it for a couple years and it's there or above, you're doing something absolutely good. So. Just word for word there, tit for tat, you might disagree, whatever. But every guy I've ever talked to, how long you had the car for? Oh, it's been three and a half years, three, two and a half years now. Two and a half years, she's about 800 horsepower. You know, I don't dog or beat it up badly, but I get into it quite a bit. Don't get me wrong, you know? And um, yeah, dude, it's good. It's great, I love it. Great oil pressure. So, and I put this motor together, okay? And that's from watching YouTube, learning the trade, okay? From guys like you out there that I've learned. So big kudos to you guys out there with all the engine channels, you know, Richard Holder, you know, Roadkill, I learned quite a bit from those guys. Um, Fiberger, just, just in Finnegan, watching those guys, Hot Rod Garage in the morning. Um, on the Motor Trend channel, you know, you learn so much, dude. So get out there, you know, watch all the TV you can or YouTube if you want to learn to trade. You know, going to school, I don't know about going to school anymore. If you want to make a living out of it. But uh, in the hobby part of it, just watch a lot of videos. You know, watch all those good channels out there. You know, Brule, Neo, Funky Stangs, you know, those guys. Just watch all of them, okay? And just... Take note. So that's it, guys. I don't know if I'm going to rebuild this or yet. I'll let you know if I do. But uh, she only lasted uh, four, three years. Three years it lasted, but it came off for, for a while and it came back on. So a little bit off and on there. But uh, yep, there you go, guys. Pulsar turbos for the win. I love it. It's a great turbo if you love turbos for on a budget. So think about it. They got a huge selection of turbos, man. A massive selection for whatever application you need. They got it. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Hit the like. Hit the subscribe. Thanks for watching. Peace.